What is going on Rocket Powered Sound Designers? Welcome to the best channel on YouTube for Serum Tutorials and in today's video we're going to be learning how to make some Virtual Riot and Elenium Chords and this is what they sound like. Pretty nasty, right? Those are so thick. They're like perfect chords. Now, if you guys like that sound, you already know what to do. Just drop a like on the video. It lets me know how many of you guys actually like the sound. And if you're new here and you haven't already subscribed, like I said, you're missing out on the best serum tutorial channel on the internet. We are the only channel that is uploading a serum tutorial every single day. I'm trying to do this as long as I can. I'm just freaking grinding out every time I go home from school, making a dope sound, and then I'm putting it out to you guys. So, if you're not already subscribed, I don't even know what to tell you. Let's go ahead and jump straight into the sound. Now, we're gonna be using a four oscillator setup for this particular chord, and um, we're gonna start off with the sub here. What that means is we're gonna be running a noise sub and oscillator A and oscillator B when I was referring to the four oscillator setup here. And the sub is going to be the foundation for the sound. The reasoning for that is because oscillator A and oscillator B are both going to be, uh, they're both going to have a high amount of voices or the unison on the sound, which is going to be detuning it. And for that, we kind of need a, a set pitch. And that's exactly what the sub's going to be doing. And then we also have the noise turned on, which doesn't, necessarily have a perceived pitch to our ears so the sub is really just laying out the foundation for what actual note that we are on if that makes any sense so we're going to go ahead and turn on oscillator a we turn that to a sawtooth waveform by the way and in oscillator a we are just going to simply turn up the unison up 16 so we have 16 individual copies of the waveform playing at a single time and we can just turn up the detune and we get the classic detune saw Oscillator B, we're going to be doing a very similar thing, up 16 voices, but except we're going to be detuning it just a tad bit more to about 45, somewhere around there. And now we're just going to be dropping the octave down negative one. So we are down one octave, then both the sub and the oscillator. And what that does is it just makes the sound a lot more full because not only do we have a foundation sawtooth waveform that doesn't have any detuning on it, but we also have an additional sawtooth waveform that is very detuned, as well as an, uh, a duplicate of that that is just pitched down an octave. So we have a lot of the same sawtooth waveforms that are just kind of gonna make the sound a lot more full. Um, I'm just gonna turn on the level a little bit of the sub here. And now into the noise here, we're gonna turn on the noise, but here's the thing, when we're dealing with chords um, especially we want to be rocking a noise that is very thick so let's just take a listen to the default which is AC hum one not too good I don't think that's really the sound we're looking for so just browsing through this is my particular favorite the ARP circuit it's very clean but it's also very full in all of the frequencies throughout our spectrum turn on the sub what the hell just was that? <laughs> Turn on the sub, oscillator A and oscillator B now. And that's a little bit too loud. We're going to drop you back down to the original level, which was around 31%. The reason why the, or the noise isn't too loud is because once we turn on our multiband compressor, it is going to increase the volume of the noise. Um, and it's going to notice that the noise is not too loud. And it's going to compensate for that and kind of make it a little bit overpowering. So that's why we want to have it at a lower level here, just so everything's evened out and it's not too aggressive. Now what we're gonna do here is turn on our filter, which is gonna be a low pass 12. And I know we're actually using a lot of the default settings here, pretty bizarre. Um, but for the cutoff, we're just gonna be turning it at around 6,500 Hertz, this area around there. And from there, it's just going to be turned on for oscillator A. Turn off the filter, turn it on. As you can hear, we're just cutting out the frequencies or the high end frequencies on oscillator A, which is perfect because the noise um, is kind of filling in for those, um, for those overtones for that, which is just perfect. And to the effects section now, this is really what's going to be driving the sound, making it sound really full. We're going to start off with a 
compressor, but we're not gonna be using the multiband in the typical way that we normally do in my serum tutorials. So let's go ahead and turn on multiband. And now what we're gonna do, this is a little trickier. We're gonna be dragging the ratio down until we get 1.2 to one. So this is where we were at before. This is where we're at now. See how much more full it is? We bring in our, we bring in a lot of the original structure of the sound here. And we're also evening out the frequencies with all or all of the different bands, which are going to be um, compressed pr pretty well. See how much better that sounds. This is a good model that you can do for almost any of your chords. Uh, not a bad idea. Now we're going to jump right onto the hyper. This is another tool that is very crucial to the sound. Let's go ahead and turn up the mix all the way to 100% and see what it sounds like. Wow, that sounds like garbage. Um, this is what I like to do when I'm working with specific effects like the, uh, the hyper, let's see, we got reverb and the chorus. Those are the main ones that I like doing this trick for. I turn up the mix all the way just so I can hear the effect that the sound's doing and then I can adjust the mix later on. So. I'm gonna turn up the unison up seven, so pretty similar to the detuning here. And here we're just going to turn up the detune just about all the way. Turn on the rate. That sounds fat. Now without it, that's what it sounds like with it. See the difference here? We're gonna drop this to around 51%. And the dimension now, you guys already know the deal if you've been watching me. We don't want too high of a size, or else we get that garbage. But a low enough size will give us enough dimension to the point where um, we still get a good stereo width without getting that extra feedback. Now, this is my favorite trick in the book. When we have the reverb going on here, like I said, I turn the mix up all the way, but that's not even the trick. Just wait till we're done here. We trump the mix all the way just to kind of test it out here. And that sounds like a complete utter garbage. Um, size is a little bit too big. We can drop the size down. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. I'd like to cut out a little bit of the low end. And now the spin, let's turn up the spin a little bit and the spin depth. Now, what kind of chords will have this disgusting reverb tail? Not good ones. So what I do here, this is something that you can do with any parameter. Um, I preferably like it on the reverb, is we take, go ahead and take envelope one, which controls the master amplitude of the entire sound and we put it on to the reverb. So for the duration of the time that we are holding a mini note, the mix of the reverb is gonna be wherever we're at. So I'm gonna drop this to around like 30%. So we have the entire full thick factor of the reverb repeating the sound back at us only while we're holding the note. So we don't get that extra tell. If I were to turn off the reverb, this is what it sounds like with it on. See the difference? We just get a lot more thicker of a sound here. It's fantastic. EQ now. EQ is going to be in here to really clean up the chords. And all we're going to be doing here is just dropping down this one little frequency right here. Turn down the or turn up the Q factor a little bit so we're a little bit thinner. And we're actually emulating a notch filter. All right, so without all of the effects, this is what we get. With them on. Now, we are close to done, but we are not quite there. We're gonna finish the sound off with a little bit of side chaining. I cheated a little bit here. I didn't use the typical volume shaper or uh, side chain compression. Instead, what I ended up doing was simply increasing the attack on the envelope here, which controls, remember it controls the entire synth. And this is what we end up getting. I think that came out pretty damn well. Now, like I said, you guys can go ahead and add on um, your X for Records OTT uh, plugin, which is 100% free. 
and it really cleans up the sound. I think it makes it sound um, a little bit more crisper and even a little bit thicker. Just go ahead and turn down the upwards compression a little bit and it will sound fantastic. Well, if you guys made it this far in the video and you're not already subscribed, you already know what to do. Just go ahead and go boop, that little subscribe button and let me know what you guys think about this sound. I thought that these chords were super fire. And finally, whether you guys like the bass or not, if you do, click, why did I say bass, this sound? If you guys like this chords, I'm so used to making bass tutorials. If you guys like these chords, then go ahead and drop a like on the video. If you don't, then drop a dislike. I just wanna know how many of you guys actually like the sound. I think that this is a fire sound. That's why I shared it with you guys, right? Um, but without further ado, my name is Shane from Rocket Powered Sound and I will catch you guys tomorrow in the next Serum Tutorial.